Hi, it's time for another verb of the day. Today's verb is hide. Let's take a look at some of the definitions or ways that we use this verb. The first way you might hear hide used is to mean to put or keep something out of sight. Sight might not be a word you're super familiar with, but it's referring to the ability to see. So what this first definition is suggesting is that something is unable to be viewed or something is unable to be noticed. A second and sort of related way to use this verb hide is to mean to prevent someone or something from being seen. So with the first definition, um, it might not be purposeful or intentional that someone or something can't be seen. But with the second definition here, we're talking about purpose. Someone is trying to prevent others from seeing someone or something. Now, definitions one and two are both connected to seeing an object or a person. Definition three uh, the meaning here is not related to something that can be seen or viewed. The third way you can use the verb hide is to refer to keeping something a secret. You should know that hide is an irregular verb. To make the progressive tense, you're going to drop the E and then add ING to form hiding. The past tense form of this verb is spelled H-I-D, and because we have a consonant vowel consonant, this is going to be a short sound. It would be pronounced hid, hid. The past, or, or pardon, the participle form of this verb is spelled H-I-D-D-E-N, and is pronounced hidden, hidden. Now let's take a moment and look at some additional meanings that are connected to phrasal verbs. One phrasal verb from hide that you might either see or hear is to hide away. This means that someone or something is being concealed in a particular place or location. An example of this might be, in the fairy tale, the monster hides away in a dungeon. So here, the monster is concealing itself in this particular place, a dungeon. Another phrasal verb you might encounter is to hide behind. This means that one person is using another or a group of people or something in order to prevent that first person from being criticized or maybe from even punishment. An example of this could be the defendant hid behind a legal technicality to avoid serving time. So here, uh, the idea is maybe the defendant was guilty and should have received punishment of uh, a prison sentence, so serving time. But they were able to use uh, a legal technicality, so maybe someone broke an administrative rule, didn't file something on time, and they have used that in order to prevent himself uh, or herself here from uh, the punishment, from serving time in prison. Another phrasal verb you might hear is to hide from. Again, this is referring to physically concealing someone or something to avoid being seen. An example of this could be, have you hidden the presents from the children? Okay. So maybe this is something that is said before a, a Christmas holiday or a birthday um, where you want to have a surprise and so you physically conceal them, you put them in some place where the presents in this case will not be seen by the children. The last phrasal verb we're going to look at today is hide out. It means to keep someone out of sight, and we tend to use this when it's connected to law enforcement. So we're talking about someone who maybe has broken a law and is trying uh, not to be discovered by police or other law enforcement. An example of this might be, 
where are the thieves hiding out? Okay, so here, where are they hiding from police? Okay. Now, let's take a look at our verb of the day, hide, in a few different verb tenses. Today, we're going to focus on the imperative and the simple future using will. Let's start with the imperative. You might know this as a command, and it's rather unique in English because there is no stated subject. The subject is implied, and it's either you singular or you plural, so two or more people. So with this uh, particular form of our verb, we are telling someone either to do the action or not to do a particular action. So we are commanding them. This is different than suggest suggesting or giving advice or recommendation, right? Here we are telling someone to do something. With my students in person, we usually talk about, uh, if you think of parents talking to their children, teachers talking to their students, the imperative is used often. You're giving commands of things that one should do or one shouldn't do. So let's look at making an affirmative sentence in the imperative. Okay, I have the example here, please hide these cookies from me so I won't eat anymore. So this meaning put them somewhere, I can't see them, uh, because if I can't see them, I won't continue to eat more and more cookies. So here, uh, what I've done is taken the imperative and maybe made it a little bit nicer or more polite with please. And you can do that anytime with the imperative. You can put please at the beginning or please at the end, but you don't need it in both places. But you'll see after that please, I'm just using the base verb. If I want to give a negative command, so here I'm telling someone not to do a particular action, I can start with do not and then the base verb, or I can say don't and the base verb. Here's another example. Don't hide your father's car keys. So here one parent is maybe talking to the children and saying like, well, that's that's a horrible thing to do. If your father can't find his car keys, he can't go to work or he can't do some other particular activity. So do not hide the keys. Now let's take a look at the simple future using will. The nice thing about this particular structure is that we're going to use will and then the base verb and that is going to be the same no matter what our subject is. We tend to use will when we're making predictions, offers, promises, kind of quick decisions is how I, I think about using will and my base verb. Let's look at an example. The new feature will hide old tweets after a given period of time. So uh, this particular sentence might be really suggesting a promise of new technology. Uh, so we have here, will hide. So these tweets will not be able to be seen after so many years have passed or months. If you want to make a negative simple future sentence using will, use will not and then the base verb. You might hear some people use the contraction won't and then the base verb. They mean the same thing. Here's another example. This candidate won't hide behind his public relations and press team. So here's our phrasal verb, hide behind. And what this is suggesting is this particular candidate, if elected, he is not going to avoid criticism or um, avoid punishment if he has done something wrong and kind of blame it on others, point to others. He will accept that criticism or pu uh, punishment. Finally, if you want to make a yes or no question using will in the simple future, that's the word you're going to start with. Start with will, then you'll have your subject, and then the base verb. You can see that structure in the example. Will the app hide user's location from selected contacts? So here, this uh, particular question is a, in some ways a bit similar to our first affirmative statement. Um, I've seen this verb hide used in connection with technology. 
many people now are using smartphones and um, different apps. We all, uh, I guess, kind of give away our privacy a bit. They can access our contacts or location um, if we're not careful and really mindful about selecting certain things. So uh, Hide is, is, again, I think becoming a more popular uh, verb to use when talking about technology and the ability to keep some of that information secret or private. Now, let's spend a little time looking at some words that are related to our verb hide. And the first word we're going to look at is just the noun form of this word. So, same spelling, same pronunciation, but here the noun hide is most commonly used to refer to the skin of an animal. Let me give you an example of this. Animal hides were a source of clothing and shelter for prehistoric humans. So what this is saying is after an animal was killed, its fur, its skin could be used as clothing or shelter. Another related word is the noun hide away. Now, if you've been watching this whole video, you know we talked about hide away as a phrasal verb, but here we've taken the verb and the preposition, pushed them in together into a noun, uh, a compound word, a noun that means a place used as a retreat or as a hiding place. Let's look at an example of this word in a sentence. Their cabin in their country is their weekend hideaway. So here uh, we're describing maybe a family or a couple who possibly live in a bigger city, but then they have a, a small house or cabin uh, in a more rural location and that's where they go on the weekend, uh, maybe to rest, to relax. That is the idea of the word retreat. Another compound word that comes from our phrasal verb hide out is the noun hide out. This is a hiding place. And this word is commonly used in connection to uh, criminals, breaking the law. Um, that's many times how you'll see this, uh, this used. So an example of this compound noun in a sentence might be, the police discovered the drug dealer's hideout. So they discovered their hiding place. The last word we're gonna look at today is hide and seek. You might be familiar with this children's game, but in it, um, depending on how many people are playing, one or more players will hide. So another person generally kind of closes their eyes, maybe they count to 10, 20, 30, whatever is appropriate for the size of, of the space. And that player who has closed their eyes will then start to look for the people who hid themselves. So um, the game is just called hide and seek. And you can see it used in an example sentence here. The three-year-old child isn't very good at hide and seek yet. He's hiding under the glass coffee table. So here, this is meant to be a little silly. Glass is transparent. We can see through it. So if you hide under or hide behind glass, well, you will be seen. You're not going to be hidden. Thanks so much for watching today's video. I hope you have a great day.